chat. Okay. We're two minutes late. Holy crap. Oh, man. Oh, I see it starting. I'm trying That's to good. open up my bottle without the cork killing me. Oh, there we go. Oh, Delicious. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, it's guys. gonna be a good show. It's gonna be a good show. You can tell. Okay. I can I tell because we're late, screen. and that's a good omen. Is when it? was the last time we were late? We were. We haven't been late in a long time. Uh, not. What about that one time we were like an hour late? Remember that? This I is nothing. Know. Are Are we on? I don't see any of us. Oh. I see a black screen. Did this that, happen last time? Yeah. No, it's because I. Uh, there we are. Oh my God! There we are. Oh. <laughs> I like that where we think that we're on, but we're not on. <laughs> Yeah, well, and it's fine because, uh, you know, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay, yeah, there's 11 people in the chat. That's cool. That's a, that's a good start. Uh, so uh, for all of you that have tuned in from the advertisements today and over the last week, thank you. Uh, I just want to let yes. you know our guests will be joining at the top of the hour. So we... And boy, I sound a little bit like Trump right now. I need to fix that. Some, some, there's something wrong there. Like, I uh, never go, Adam. You crossed a line with your. Yeah. Uh, for those of you just yes. doing good right yeah. now. <laughs> no, oh, I got to snap out of that shit. Okay, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's gonna be a good show. Uh, and we have Mr. Rob Fuller who's gonna be joining. Uh, he's he's yes. a good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. It's funny. Does he, know, was, does he know karate? Does he, do you know? I don't know. We... But I was talking to him earlier before the show, uh -huh. and I sent him a. Uh, I did a little enhanced uh, photo uh, of this tiny little picture he has on his his website of him receiving a Billboard uh, Video Game Designer of the, of the Year Award, and so I did this enhanced version of it, and, uh -huh. and so I sent him his little tiny picture, and I'm like, enhance. 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 <laughs> Did you use the Blade Runner Enhance? Yeah, or... exactly. Well, I, that's what I was with the point, right? Or the he, CSI Enhance. Well, the know? funny thing is is that he got it. He understood what I was saying. And uh, I had worked pretty hard on this photo today. Uh, not all day, but for, for a good portion of the day. So, um, and, and, I, and I sent him a copy of this, uh, you know, blown up enhanced photo. And, and he's quite impressed. Oh, I better turn that off. That's going to be a problem. That was a fun sound. Yeah, that's my. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. No, I have to work tonight. By the way, so I'll just. Oh man. So what? You got a release or something? Yeah, we have a release. Um, release. Release. Uh, it and it's bad. It's um. Bad, like an emergency? No, it's just that. Is this one have... of these where you're going to be up till three a.m. and then finally production be. acceptance testing starts and blah 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 blah. Uh, I start at eleven o'clock tonight, so. It'll be a fun night, man. You know, you know. I no, nobody said that. Oh yeah, it'll be a fun night. What my company is in on the East Coast, and so they start at eleven, but it's ten here. I don't know if that's better. I think I just ate a fly. I did. I just about drank a fly. I mean, Whoa. those are pro those are protein. Oh my god! You're very progressive. How was oh my it? God. I think I might throw up. That was gross. I almost swallowed a fly. I don't know why I swallowed a fly. Perhaps I'll die. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's not uh, good. I love that song. Oh, me too. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. That would be a good arcade game. I don't know. Uh, so chat. Who's in the chat right now? Let's let's welcome well, the chatters. We got I a see, bunch of chatters. Yeah. Uh, Alanon. Boy, you might be in the Boy. wrong group tonight i don't troy zilla of course metropolis mr peabody mike page yeah mike page Ooh, is gonna mike win tonight page. i feel it <laughs> cruiser seven alan noon okay um mark regal us with a story i need to i need to go um this fly has freaked me out I'll be right back. Okay, so while Adam is gone, let me tell you guys about the. Uh, wait a minute, did I talk to about that? I don't remember or not. Did I did I talk to you guys about uh, how I backed my truck up? What is Adam doing? He's like, are you gonna take your pants off behind this curtain? Look at this. I think if you just left the room, it'd be good. What? <laughs> he did it. <laughs> where? Wait, where were we? Okay, okay, yeah. Right, a story. Um, you know, if you're in Houston, actually, uh, on Sunday, I'm going to dig Uncle Rico's van out of storage, which 
basically I just have to open the garage door and then and then start it and then back it out. And that that's digging it out. Uh, and I'm going to take it to B-52 Brewery, and they're doing some special thing, and I get 10 drink tickets just for driving it around the block over to the brewery. I'm very excited. I don't think anybody here is there is going to be there, but we will document it and stuff like that. It is Adam's birthday. No, actually, my birthday is on the 27th. I think his is a day before or a day after my birthday. Brian is actually coming out of surgery and will be here shortly. So since, you know, he saves lives and stuff, we're going to give him a a pass. I think that's the word, right? I've been watching a lot of Celebrity Family Feud, and it is really bad. But occasionally, you know, you get a gem out of it. But anybody here? Celebrity Family Feud fans? Nobody? No. I was going to say that Brian is just, uh, you know, has a paralysis where both sides of his face are frozen, and he's really happy. When it happened, but it's not it. This is my first time on the show all by myself. Oh, that reminds me. One time, uh, you know, Whataburger is like a fast food restaurant in Texas. And in like 1988 or something, I worked there. But there was always somebody else in the store with me. But one time, the manager, like it was 3 a.m. and I was working the night shift, he left. And then I was like king of the Whataburger. And nobody was in the drive through or inside or anything, but I was still like, yes, I am I am the master of this Whataburger. And I got on top of the tables, and I was like, you know, ah, the Whataburger place. And then I slipped a little bit, but I caught myself, and nobody saw. But that doesn't matter. I got off, and then um, I think he saw me, though, as he was pulling into the parking lot, the manager. <laughs> yeah. But um, when I left that, when I left my job at Whataburger... He gave us like a stack. This you really thick. worked at Whataburger? Uh, yeah, a stack of t- so, free Tikito coupons. Can you call it coupons. Whataburger and not Whataburger? Whataburger. That's how you say it here. Weird. Yeah, Whataburger. Mm. I mean, that's how I said it. I don't know. <laughs> and the Whataburger I worked at but used to be a what? Del Taco. Like W? What? How do you say the word W H A T? What? You don't say what? What? So what? it's Whataburger, not Whataburger. Whataburger, yeah. No, it's Whataburger. Oh, you Midwest. Wait, have you always been in the Midwest? What is that noise? Do you hear that? What noise? I, I thought I heard a... <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> I heard like a... Hey, guess what, Mark? It's our birthday next week. Yeah, well, whose birthday's first? I forget. I'm the 28th. I'm the 27th. And you're so, still going to still be in the 40s, right? <laughs> Wait, no? No. You're not entering the 50s, are you? I mean, I what's up with that? 5-0. <laughs> I'm heading I'm in the big 5-0. All right. Welcome to the 50s. I don't know about that, man. I, I don't know. Cheers to you. I think yeah, when we're so... entering the big 6-0, we'll be like, okay, then let's be careful. We won't be doing the show then. Oh, man. I think we have like seven seasons in us, and that's it. <laughs> Unless that's somebody good... starts paying us money, because I don't got. I mean, I love doing the show with you guys. Don't get me wrong. In fact, I'd still love to have a call every week. Right. But <laughs> yeah, uh, how come nobody's calling except for Bob Zarzadek? I don't know. What? It's weird. Six one two five four eight game. Everybody noticed Adam is older than Fire Truck. <laughs> Not by much. Yeah, I don't think. Well, I mean, all video games predate me. I guess. Well, no, Atari and no, I the share other one. the same birthday. It's 1972. Right. Yep. But they're already, they already turned fifty. I can't believe I almost ate this fly. I'm gonna get. It's got it out. Got it out, and that's what's important. Hey, look, Ralph ninety nine. Ralph ninety nine. Welcome to the Tw- show. Hey, I folks. I know Troyzilla. It's good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a while. Yo, Eddie. So tonight's shirt is. Oh, check it out, Rex Quan Do. Oh my gosh, that is awesome! Did you wear that with a van? I will on Sunday. Oh. The van gets to do a little gig at a brewery. Nice. I was mentioning that while you were going poo. So I wasn't. I was getting a refresher. <laughs> I wasn't going. Oh to yeah, poo. right, a refresher. <laughs> no, really, folks, we poo before the show. There's a. Like a five-minute break where we all call each other. I don't other even know skip. what to say to you right now. 
Well, the funny thing is because Brian, <laughs> we have this picture of Brian. It's a dopey picture of Brian and this black space for our friend Rob, who will show up shortly. Oh, I should open the show notes. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Should we have written show notes? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got show notes. I'm <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> you can read what you have to. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, well, uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> That's fine. I, uh, you know, this is the part of the show where we goof around and get people warmed up. Get them warmed excited. Up. Hey, uh, it's going to be just you and me talking about what we've been working on, though. I tell you that. I, right? I can deal with it. That sounds good. Yeah. I mean, like, Brian, Brian's like, I'm like, I called him earlier in the week. Are you going to be on the show? Oh, yeah. No, no, no doubt. I'm going to be here. And then, and then he's like, he calls me like 15 minutes before he's supposed to be here. And he's like, I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be late. Hmm. So. Well, he better have blood all over him. That's that would make it more fun. So good times. It's funny. Uh, okay. So uh, do, you see, do you see this? What episode are we on anyway? Uh, twenty. That twenty. Yes. Okay. That's good. Twenty is a good episode. Twenty. That means we only have like four left. Is that our goal? We hit twenty-four. Yeah, like twenty-four, and then we're like done. You know, I, it, I go on vacation in September, and then, you know, in so. two weeks, uh, I'll be at Disneyland. Really? On Thursday. How come I can't see the show notes? Oh, there they are. Uh, I don't know. I, I see them right. I got them. They're right over there now i'm not gonna read them i'm just gonna read them i'm gonna do it live do it live i'm gonna do it live do you like my showbiz okay. pizza place shirt it is nice I, I still have some of your cards have you run out of them finally or do you still have some more what cards you know the the chuck e cheese or were they were they showbiz or chuck e cheese cards? oh you mean the nolan bishnell yes cards? yes those are awesome we need to have them reprinted though using uh moo.com card stock it's oh. a, it feels very like legit okay okay i can do that i haven't, I'll, I haven't I'll printed anything it. in a long time this is actually a legitimate showbiz pizza shirt what no yep mm. yep i bought it from the showbiz pizza place people I don't know if it's actually licensed, but it's very comfortable and soft <laughs> and supple, you know? Okay, Austin Powers, I got you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are we Okay. Oh, we've, we've, only lo- we've only we lost so three viewers. Excellent. <laughs> we have so much to get through. We have so much to get through. So much. All right. Well, uh, I guess, you know, this is the Brian's- part of sh- we should probably hit the button. Yes. Because it's 7.30. And that's... Can you show the button? What's it look like? Is that thing liftable oh, yeah. where you're at? I can show you. Nobody's ever seen the button. Look at that. Oh, I think they have. A little a little higher up. There yeah. Oh, there it is. So it's the arcade radio button. Do you see that? Uh-huh. That's... And that's what starts the show? That's what starts the show. Oh, nice. It's uh, my <laughs> stream deck. So if I hit this button... <laughs> <laughs> Live from KOYR Studios in Minneapolis, Minnesota, this is Arcade Radio. Thanks for listening in on the Arcade Sphere. This is season six, episode twenty of the Arcade Radio Podcast. Today is Thursday, August eighteenth. Ten days from my proverbial birth date. Uh twenty twenty two. And the time is now approximately seven thirty two PM Central. I'm your host, Adam Banner. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me 
when you make me angry. I'm joined by my <laughs> co-host, Mark, watching She-Hulk in his pajamas shields. And last and least, Paradise Arcade Shop proprietor and part-type gimp recruiter, it's Brian Thurston Howell, Armatures the Third. He will be here. He is just absent at the Yes, moment. I mean, it's really hard for him to lure gimps, so right. just yeah. wait up. And joining us tonight, he's an American game programmer with a storied career. In addition to being a semi-professional poker player and occasional pianist, keyboardist, he's created classic games for the Atari 2600 like Night Driver, Cosmic Arc, and two of the console's biggest hits, Missile Command and 1982's Demon Attack. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a warm round of applause for Mr. Rob Volop, who will be joining us at the top of the hour. Thank you. I'm glad he's I'm glad yes, to be here. premature clapping. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, we try not to bore our uh, guests. Yeah, we this. don't want to put them through this yeah, unless they're a huge the fan of the show. Stuff, you know. uh, so tell us, what, I, I hear you've been working on Frisky Tom. Yeah, I got my nano monitor, which is a, I guess, a MC2000. You know, they, they all seem to have the same schematics, but it's there's mm. different names for these monitors. And so when I bought my Frisky Tom, it was dead. I had been given a Sanyo like, to use in lieu of that, but I was determined to make the real monitor that came with it work. And I did get it working. I found a f several faulty places where the somebody who had never soldered before or was surely blind and also soldered uh had you know put in a cap kit and and there were like literally like scratches like you know when somebody's in a dark room and they're scratching with like their bloody finger it looked like that on the back of the pcb so i refloated it got it running looked great next morning i'm like I'll do more. I'll try to fix the sound. And as, and um, as soon as I thought, as soon as that thought came into my head, a huge pop and a crackle, and uh, there was no snap, oh, but there was a sad. pop and a crackle, and uh, and the monitor went out. And so now I'm like Eww. blowing fuses, and uh, I had to replace a resistor. Wait a minute. I I replaced... thought, so it's not working. It was, but then now it's not. Uh, what, did you get to it, play it at all? Yeah, but I mean, there was no audio, so mm -hmm. I didn't really know if that's like key. And really, the game is weird. There's no fire button, right? I don't think there is. Okay. You're kind of climbing on pipes and knocking off rats from pipes. And apparently some woman is in a bathtub, but I never got to that part. It's, it's like my whole high school and junior high career. Anyway, except for the pipes and the rats. Um, and then, uh, oh, then there was tragedy later this week. Where oh. I decided I'm going to do something that I can't break. Well, technically I could, but the glass for my Tron that I bought from Phoenix, the the grid, you know, the, the little oh, grid yeah, glass. Yeah, that... yeah, yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Disc of Tron, right. So, uh, so I took it out of the box and I was going to put it up. And then I looked down and I noticed that, you know, the, tr the, 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 the big piece of glass with the Tron holding up his hand and stuff like that. And there's no, oh, yeah, yeah. there's no Yori next to him. Uh huh. It was bubbling. No. Brand new. Yes. Uh, from who and was that? Was it from Rich? That was from this old game. But And I was like, what, mm. what, what is happening? And then I, I noticed one of my windows was cracked. So humidity from outside had been coming in and, you know, mm. sipping on my class. Anyway, so I had to, like, cut out the bad parts put in some black paint, mask it off, and then I triple thicked it and now I think I've got it impervious impervious again. Okay. But what what a freaking nightmare, man. That sounds awful. Yeah. So I am going to Disneyland though on uh December, September 1st through the 4th for 4 days. Oh, that's so funny. We miss each other out there. I'm I'm going uh September 17th to the 24th. Dang. So it's nice. I'm not I'm not going to Disney World the whole time, but Like a oh, world or land? World. Oh, see, so I'm gonna be at land. Oh, I see. We're I can go, go to world. world later. Oh yeah, you should come. Uh, should I follow week. you? What are you oh, gonna yeah. do? What's going on? I've got a huge uh, villa there. You come and hang out. I got an extra bedroom. What? Yeah. Oh yeah, you you could come. Free lodging, man. And an okay. I, and like connected to four resorts, and it's like Marriott. Are you a Marriott guy? Of course, I've got yeah. the points. So, dude, you should come over, hang out. Oh, dang it. Waterfall pool, two minutes from the entrance to world. Man. Gonna go hey, what's your, the... what, not to cut you off, but what are you working on? 
<laughs> oh, uh, you know, uh, you know, that fire truck was like, oh, yeah, I fixed it. Blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, it broke. Ah, uh. yeah, it's a ram, and I'm sure it's solder joints. So I, I'm just gonna dig in. Uh, I went to storage and I lamented the fact that I have a, a Star Trek cockpit, a Monaco GP cockpit, a, a cartoon booth, uh, and three other arcade as uh, a wide body Mario. Uh, Ooh. And, if, and if anybody wants to buy any of this stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm open. Cause I need to, I need to, I need to get rid of that thing. Is your Star Trek cockpit in working condition? That's the only one I'm not going to sell. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. I see. I, I can't sell it. It's the it's the game that there are two games that got me into the hobby, and one of them was Tron. And you bought and you sold it to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I sold the cockpit or the the cocktail that I I put together. Which oh, is, that one's beautiful. It was really sad. Uh, but uh, so the Star Trek cockpit I played at. Holiday Plus in Burnsville. Oh wow! Many years, you know, it's many years after it had already come out, but it was there, and I used to go up there and buy CDs and and uh, they had a little tiny arcade in there, and uh -huh. I used to go play. Were there like, were there any girls there? No. Oh no! No, this was a guy thing. Oh, so it was like a Rush concert? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know. Oh, you know what? We don't have a, a gadget guy, so we should probably just do the news. What do you think? Sure. Wait, you can why not? You can read the entire article if you want. <laughs> sure. oh. <laughs> yeah. Arcade News, arcades, pinball, industry alumni, arcade opening, selected, celebrities, world record holders, operators, coin-out, conventions, the Arcade News. We interrupt the ventilation of all the The Arcade News with Ken Stevens. Well, that would be me. Nice. Huh. So from Hackaday.com, Doom was ported to the Sega Naomi Arcade Hardware. Dude, I'm excited about that. Are you? I have a, a, what is it, a Royal Rumble that uses Sega mm. Naomi hardware, and I've been trying to, you know, be less lazy and then convert it to use the, you know, the thing where you can play a bunch of games. Hmm. Have you ever done that? No. Do you I have any Sega Naomi games? I don't have any Naomi. Oh, I see. Yeah, so porting Doom to the new hardware and software platforms this is a fun pastime for many hackers on the scene. Dragon yes. Minded noticed that nobody had ported the game to the Sega Naomi arcade hardware and set about doing it so herself. The port builds on one work. Uh, Christopher Anderson, who built a frame buffer port of Doom previously, it's available pre compiled, complete with shareware and wad for those eager to load it up on their naomi arcade cabinets unlike some of the limited ports that only have appearance of functional version of doom this port is remarkably complete loading saving and option menus are all present and accounted for as well as directional sound and even wad auto discovery with that said there's only 32 kilobytes of space for save games on the naomi hardware so keep it in mind if you find yourself playing regularly. Uh, and from DualShockers.com, Dual Shockers. Dual! Oh, my penis! Wait. Dual. Arcade. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Arcade. Oh, just, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Arcade Paradise Review, 90s nostalgia at its best. Obviously, being that the game is called Arcade Paradise, you go against the grain and take the initiative and turn your grubby little laundromat into a gamer's haven with a collection of the sweetest arcade games known to 1993. In Arcade Paradise, if you will, but there's a twist. As part of the game, you're also running the laundromat <laughs> within the game. It's a yeah. long journey and a mundane day to day. This is like, do you know, like, remember those little, uh, those little, I don't know what they're, they're like a little electronic, uh, Oh, Tamagotchi? Yeah, you had to keep them alive. Oh, of course. Yeah, remember that? My wife killed many Tamagotchi. <laughs> I just, I, Tamagotchi. I, 
I, that was really a big thing. Like it was in the nineties, right? I don't. Yeah, I mean, I found one of hers and I put a new battery in it, and then it was like, it, it was like a zombie. Like, ah, I was dead, and it's like this is stupid. Can you bring it back to life? Yes, there was a reset. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So anyway, uh, you begin each day with a quick run around the premises to clear up all the crap the customers have left behind before heading out. This this is too real. Uh, I know. I, I would it's like those games this. where you're gardening. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. this is like a game like. Okay, I've got a great idea. We're in a you're in a Atari brainstorming session, and somebody says, "Let's make a game called Clean Your House." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can Wait. have a, we can have a vacuum cleaner, and we can have a, a broom, and we can have toilet bowl cleaners, and oh, we can have delicious. Kinds, and it would just be you know you going around and cleaning stuff. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Anyway. <laughs> anyway uh, I can't even read the rest of this article because it's so incredibly boring. Well, the, I, that's why I rearranged them with the the Doom <laughs> the Doom port one first. Now that uh, the person that um, I, I Dragon minded, her name is Super Gentendo. She's super cool. She posts on Twitter like super she's Gen. always doing something cool on Twitter. Is she's is she not the one that made the those little handheld games? Is she? I don't know. She's awesome. Mm. She she's like us uh, times five. I think Super Gen. Uh, Netropolis is who is who I uh, found her through. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're thinking. Yeah. Hi, Brian. Hey, how's Brian going? is here. I'm uh, here. I'm just hanging out. Weird. I think I am. Hey, you're still. Uh, yeah. What's uh, up? <laughs> I, mean, I guess. Oh, How's it look. Going? Uh. He, he's. I don't see a camera yet, though. I see him on the. <laughs> you don't see him on the sky. I see me. I no. see. Oh, oh well, there he is. Uh, I got him. Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Nice How are you? He's got a nice golly ghost behind him. I know. Did you finally get that? I is I it in your place. hands? Have you touched it? I got to play it last I've touched, week. I have played it. Dang it! It's really cool. I've played it. I've never, <sighs> I've never played that game until I played it at Paradise Arcade Shop. What Saturday? Yeah. So I Lucky. guess you know. I guess that's something I was doing in the hobby. Uh, playing Slick. Bri- playing Brian's game. <laughs> pretty, pretty crazy game. Hey Brian, what are you working on? Yeah, what what are you working on? Oh my God! Well, we had a ice, an ice cold beer video I shoot yesterday. That was a mixed working. bag. Um, they were we we're doing some, um, basically taking some video and some photos for promotional stuff. What's going on with your and, mic? What's up? Something's up with your mic. Is make it sure, like make sure going in and out? Yeah, make sure you have it selected. I don't know if you do. Let me try one thing. Oh, hold on. Oh, that's better. That was much better. Yeah. Put it like forward. Put it. In, can you put it in your mouth? Could, yeah. Is that how Could close just, it into the mouth? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. Uh, yeah. That sounded yeah, really is good. Is that better? Too. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. way better. That's much better. So it's kind of funny. Dude, like, we only have head... like 14 minutes left. I need like headphones that are my size. It's like I have to like wear these crooked. Yeah. Um, but the uh, so. The photo shoot was yesterday. The machine, of course, stopped working at 1030 at night the day before, and I'm up in Duluth. We're talking about so. ice cold beer right now. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, a catastrophic FPGA board failure, which is mm-hmm. kind of crazy because we haven't seen that. I mean, these are hand-soldered prototype boards, but um, so that was fun. And uh, what else have I been working on? I... Um, Got back to the shop. Actually, got to work on a few different things. Mm. I'm trying to think of what I was actually. Well, the Golly Ghost, which Adam got to see. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully we're getting back to some ramparts. I've got three rampart builds going on right now. So if anybody needs a rampart, oh, I do. I I, I love a rampart. What? I'll, I'll, I'll take one. I'll trade you a couple of games I've got. Uh, I just mentioned on the show. Uh, I'll trade you a a, a cartoon he, booth. Yeah, no, <laughs> a cartoon booth. 
<laughs> okay. The, the list of things that I don't need right now. No more cockpit style games. Oh, no! I have a cockpit Monaco GP. Uh, yeah. So, anyhow, uh, we should probably move on to the next part of the show. We're just never going to finish before Rob shows up. I, I have a super quick gadget. Yes. Uh, all right. You want to play the gadget thing? Yeah, uh, you don't you don't have to play the bumper. Right, I can just tell people. So for those of you who haven't been paying attention, you should go check out the uh, FPGA cat box thread on KLOV. Um, Fred is doing another version of that. It is phenomenal. He has improved what it was already incredible. And there's kind of this brain trust of guys that gets together once a week and talks about the stuff and comes up with amazing ideas for things to do. So huge props to them. And if you haven't checked that thread out, Go check it out. You're going to want one of these. And it's just one guy making them. He makes them at his house in his basement with his nice. own pick and place. So Sweet. get in line. That's uh, it. We, you know, we have a brand new newbie in the chat, Smiles B2333. Wondering if Rob Phillips is going to be here. Yes. Uh, yes. We announced at the beginning of the show, he will be here at the top 12, of the hour. 12 and, minutes. And here we go. Back in 82. I used to be able to throw a pigskin quarter mile. Back, back, back to, to the cave, cave. with with Time Runner. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? Hello and welcome back to the cave. I've decided I'm going to talk about Back to the Future stuff every time I have my little segment, and I will do it in one minute. In a here. <laughs> Uh, after being retired in 20, 2007, rather, Universal Orlando fans have always wondered if Back to the Future the Ride might ever make a return. Uh, that Universal Orlando is, as you know, a home to many thrilling attractions. And uh, But it's funny, there's only two attractions left standing from when the park originally opened. That would be the E.T. Adventure Ride, which is hilariously oh, yeah. bad, and I cannot believe it's still there. And the horror makeup show. So the E.T. ride, they ask you what your name is, tell them something hilarious, and then E.T. will actually say it at the end when it's when he's flying by you. Oh, that's funny. Or, or you're flying by it. Um, I'm pretty sure they're going to do this because the license to have the Simpsons as an, as an amusement park is expiring soon. I think in t- 2027 or whatever. I mean, that's relatively soon. Hmm. And Disney's probably not going to let them renew it, so they're going to, you know, <laughs> take take the Simpsons in house. And so they're they're probably like, well, what can we do here now that we're not allowed to run Simpsons stuff? And so Back to the Future is the thing, and that's it. Now, now all I have to ask the question is, what's in the juke? All right, <laughs> Adam's not ready. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the welcome to the season welcome, six edition welcome of welcome to the welcome to the welcome to the season six edition of what's in the juke. It's the game within a game of the podcast. Today we feature super short, isolated audio tracks from specifically Wait a minute, we April. Do we do this every week? April nineteen eighty three. <laughs> Today we feature. Do I say every week? No, we don't do it every week. I do it by myself in the bathroom. Hey, <laughs> if, wait, whoa! <laughs> if you can guess it... the title of the song, you will get uh, syphilis. You will get. <laughs> Remember that thing with all Half the buttons? Point. Okay, good. Close enough. If you can guess the name of the group, you will get. Half point. If you can guess both. Full point. Yes, that's sir, correct. Hopefully, Brian will be your scorekeeper. If you do not know either, please fight it out amongst yourselves. Yes! Throw him down. Yes, I don't know. I don't know my emperor quotes, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are we ready? Mostly, I, th- I think. I I have a theme th- that I uh, came up with, Adam. Let's see if you can oh, figure it out. Okay. Well, first of all. Uh, Tell us why it's April 30th. Yeah. Uh, so April 30th is... Uh, it's a, it's a great because Rob's uh, Rob Fulop was uh, given the very first uh, annual Billboard Video Game Designer of the Year award. How do you like very them cool. apples? Yeah, do they still give that out? And I don't think they gave it out after the first year. Oh man, they were like, okay, <laughs> never again. That's going to be a question when we see him. Well, I mean, it's like okay, uh, 
Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I'm how def- many awards have you won that are no longer given out? <laughs> exactly. Uh, how many awards have you won that... Uh, and he's going to be like, one? Don't exist. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, but uh, it, it, that is why we picked it. So uh, for those of you uh, playing along, it is... Set your mind. Right. Uh, 1980, uh, put, you know, set your way back machines. Way back. Yeah. Google April 30th, 1983, and then good luck. Right. Uh, and your, here comes your first track. Oh! <laughs> that, that is not even fair. I love it, it is fair. <laughs> Let's try that again. I'm oh! that is awesome. We're gonna get flagged for that because there's no, there's no, no. audio. You didn't, you didn't even have to remove the audio. Oh, oh, trust me, I did. You know, you know who would be uh, really good at this is Casey. Uh, oh yeah, but I'm pulling for Mike Page today. No yeah. offense, but Mike Page is my man here. Oh, it is Def Leppard. Andy got it. All right, Andy with Def Leppard. Point. Nice work, buddy. Oh! <laughs> who got Brian? Who got the uh, name yet? Has anybody got it? It's, this this is tough because I, I'm you know it is Just Andy, and there we go. Grinwing with photograph. Nice half point. Nice work, you guys. That was, that's that deserves a bell, maybe even a double bell. <laughs> yeah, you know. I <laughs> typed in photograph. All right. Okay. Here comes your next track. When the bullet hits the thong. Oh, these, that's really difficult. These are difficult. <laughs> I, I'm I'm digging it though. When the bullet hits the bone. When the bullet hits the bone. Oh, my bone got hit with a bullet. My bullets. It's are... very awkward. Oh, my bones have been hit by a bullet. What's funny about this song? It's like, wh- wait, wait, when, where, why are we talking about a bullet hitting a bone right now? Like, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Peabody with golden earring and Grinwing Half with. Point. Twilight Zone. Nice. Half point. Nice. Okay. Here comes your next track. All right. Oh, that's good. I like that. (laughs) See? Do you see a theme here? Yeah. Like, these are just like, oh, this is so great. I love this. (laughs) I I mean, the first one goes well with this one. Yeah, see? (laughs) 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 No, it's really going to make it difficult. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, it's too hard for people. That's what she said. (laughs) That is... Okay, so... (laughs) <laughs> that is a difficult one. Is anybody, yes. Is anybody getting it? The The band name is not one that you just go, oh, I can't wait to <laughs> listen to my, what's, you know, band name album. Oh. Oh. oh, oh yo, yo, Yoetti. Got somebody got it. Yoetti got the, the song, Lost on Jeopardy. Well, oh, he did. I missed that. Well, lo- lo- Lost on Jeopardy is the Weird Al version, but it is... Jeopardy. He, yeah. He, well, he said lost in Jeopardy, which I, you know, it's close enough. He gets yes. half point. Half point. All right. Here comes your next track. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Andy got it. Both full point to Andy. All right, Andy. Four. Full point. Journey faithfully. Nice. That's that is some skill. I gotta say. <laughs> okay, here comes your next track. Close to feeling fade away. Oh, girl. <laughs> Close to feeling fade away. That's a great track. Yes. It's probably one of my all favorite, you know, all time favorite bands. And Andy got it with Men at Work, Mr. Peter Body with Overkill. Nice. nice. All right. Okay, here comes your next track. Oh, that's that's not that's enough. A, that's a voice, by the way. Oh my gosh. 
I didn't realize that they were playing a sample of a voice. Okay, here it comes again. Oh, that's that's hard. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Oh man. <laughs> okay, that's difficult. We get it. We get that to Brian. <laughs> Not yeah, that's... close. Yeah, I'll yeah. give it to him. Gosh, hate giving him points. <laughs> Croc got always something there to remind me. Yes. Fine. And Andy with the name Naked Eats Wise Eyes. He finally got there. We'll give it to him. Yeah. Nice work, Andy. Good job. I learned it by watching you. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, here comes your next track. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This might be my favorite What's in the Juke ever. Thank you. This, I was like, I am going to do something crazy tonight. Oh, my gosh. It was, it's, this is inspired. Okay. And, and these are all the week that Rob got his freaking award. Right. For the Billboard. People, they're like, what can I do in a song? It's not a word. <laughs> Mr. Peabody yeah! got the name of the song. Amazing. I'm going to have to Half give point. Voices FYC the, the name of the band since I can't give Mr. Peabody stucks. Half <laughs> point. <laughs> no, yeah. <that's laughs> nice, nice smackdown. Get in, fight like a robot. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay come right here, now, here. on the chart, we have Andy with 2.5 points, Mr. Peabody with 1.5 points, Grinwing with 1 point, Yoedi with a half point, and then both of the Florida men in the chat with a half point each. <laughs> okay. Notice I put those half points last. Okay, here comes your next track. Oh, oh that's that's the best part of that song. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, it sounds really, sultry all by itself. It does. It you does. know, it's interesting. I like her. Uh, I have... I used to like this band, but they play a lot of their. Uh, uh-huh. I get tired of hearing their songs. Uh, oh, um, really? Yeah, it's a lot of repeats. So it's a bummer. Metropolis oh! with the name of the band, Pretenders. Half point. <laughs> and Mr. Peabody with the name of the song, Back on the Chain Gang. Half point. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Mr. Peabody trying to. All in one. Nice. All right, here comes your next track. You will not believe your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl. You will not Didn't... believe your eyes. Oh. oh. <laughs> Rin did get it. I got to I gotta go back. I missed Grinwing. Got it. All right. Oh. No, correction to the scores. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's go uh, back. What? <laughs> Half point. We got okay. I'm back on here. Grinwing, she's a beauty. <laughs> Proc, the tubes. Nice, nice. Half point for, for both those guys. All right. <laughs> okay, here comes your next track. Oh, that's really quick. Let's try that again. Oh, I don't. I don't oh, there's no I, way anybody's gonna get that one. I don't think I any I could get that. Well, <laughs> and I'm yeah, pretty, and I'm pretty good. I don't know. In retrospect, I'm like, why did I pick that one? Oh wait, I have a second sample. Yeah. I gave two of these, so there's a number one and a number two. The two is a second, okay. is a different so, part of the song. Let's try this one. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's not good. Oh. Oh. That's not well, much better. I, I mean, that clears it all up. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I was uh, raving about this guy earlier in the week. Well, well, everybody's struggling. Here's the other gadget. I'll play. I'll play a, a small clip of the actual song. Oh, you vanished for a second when you showed it. Uh, oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> what now? Oh, there it is. Yes, that looks good. This is the other gadget. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice. Here, here comes a tiny little bit of the song. Nice. <laughs> There you go. Followed by. <laughs> he says this stuff a lot. <laughs> oh, girl. You will not believe your got eyes. it. Why are you doing science? Nice. Right, good. <laughs> Half point. 
All right. Here, here comes your last. Tr Wait, do we get the song too? Mr. Peabody got the name of the band. Half point. The name of the band. Okay, here comes your last track. Last track. No. This is very sad. Here it is. Like a boomerang, I need a receipt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like a boomerang, I need a receipt. I have no idea what he's saying there. Like a boomer and I need a disease. Like a boomer, I need a repeat. <laughs> like a boomer and I need a disease. I think he's saying I need a disease, but I'm not sure. All right, we got <laughs> Mr. Peabody with ZZ Top. Half point. Yes. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> And Mr. Peabody with Give Me Full All Your Love. All right. All right. Full point. And with that, Mr. Peabody clinches the win. Taking over for from Andy, who is now in second place, and Grinwing in third place. Nice. Sweet. Uh, well, thanks a lot, guys. That, that was, was a lot, lot of fun. A lot of uh, nonverbal singing. Very, very nice. Very good. Should we see if we can get this Rob fellow on the phone? That'd be awesome. All right. Do you have to call him or? No, not normally, but I will. You know. Okay. Let's he knows. See how... Remember, um, who was it that we interviewed and they fell asleep? Remember that? <laughs> Adam? <laughs> that was Brian. That was Brian F. Colon. Yeah, Brian, right. Yeah. No, that was a full on dead. <laughs> All right, now, a... right now I bet Rob's struggling with his computer trying to get it to. There he goes. Well, can... Oh look, speak of the devil. I, I, I want. I want to get onto my. Uh, I want to get onto my computer, not on my phone. Okay, well you no can problem. hang up and just join I'm when you. Back? Yep. Can you so... that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, we're getting close. Yep. Could everybody can else I hear you guys? This. What's what do you that? got? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it plugged in? How's it doing that? It's, uh, I've got a full kind of set of programs now for all this different lighting stuff on here. Is this that thing you were programming that you were asking me about? Yeah. Nice. So I finally figured out how to do the compression on the uh, file. So the compression was to do the ripple effect. Let me go back there. Seizure mode. There's oh this. my god! But like, it shoots across and it does it add, does additive waves. So when the waves hit each other, they actually add, and just like a wave would. So if you get multiple ones, you'll end up with whites because all the colors add together and you get white. So I had to create like a com my own compression protocol to get all the data in to be able to do that because oh. I couldn't calculate it fast enough. Nice. So, anyways, I mean. It's like the fun things that you would see in VR, but in real life. Yeah, I mean, these, we they sold like 370 of these. Oh, my God. Like, here's the back of it. It's like this. But anyhow, so this is called a hitbox for those that are wondering. It's an all-button fight game controller. We should, uh, you should send me one, and then I'll make TikToks. I only have 150,000 followers. Maybe somebody likes that. Yeah, that's uh, actually... Uh, so the guys, the guy who won Evo this year, that's the yeah. style of controller he used. Dang. Yeah. And that, that's so. uh, yeah, those are available at Paradise Arcade Shop. Yeah, I guess I'll just buy one and do it. And Proc is challenging me here. So while we're here, yes, all eight can light up at the same time. And so they just turned off. It's the... fully programmable, so you can like change all the colors of all the buttons, have them do different yep. behaviors and all that stuff. It's kind of cool. It's kind of. It's cool. kind of fun. Hey, where are you, Brian? Are you out of town? I'm in Duluth, actually. Duluth. Yeah. Okay. Duluth. And uh, voices asked, it's a uh, three hundred and seventy-five dollars for one of these. <laughs> <laughs> so. So wait, is this an apartment that you're at, or? Yeah, it's so we have this apartment that we there's three of us that split an apartment up here. So we oh, just I come see. up and it's kind of nice. We get to just crash and, you know, have stuff in the refrigerator. There's like a pelvis over there for us to draw models on if we have a pelvic fracture come in, all this kind of fun stuff. But it's. Uh, oh, are you all in the same uh, practice? I mean, not practice, but, uh, you know. 
we all do orthopedics, but we're all here at different times. So we pass off the trauma. We all do trauma here. And so we all hand off that, you know, basically so awesome. one person shows up, sleeps on the couch, the next person gets to bed, and then you just keep cycling through. <laughs> but it's, it's, I mean, like literally Lake Superior is right there. Oh, and man. Every morning now, um, I guess it's just this time of year. I don't know. Adam might know better, but like every morning there's a thunderstorm right now. Oh, wow. So the days are, are sunny, but every morning I wake up and there's lightning and thunder outside <laughs> and there's like fog rolling. And it's, it's like a cloud more than fog on the on the water. I mean, I know it's fog, but it's so dense that it looks like just a cloud with the sunrise behind it. So you basically the whole window is just yellow or orange or whatever colors at that point. It's it's beautiful. Dang. Huh. Nice. I think we have a chat, maybe. Uh... Grinwing, that is not a dollhouse, okay? That is an excellent game that I want now. <laughs> and now that I have it, I can tell everybody about it, make it popular. Right. I mean, it. it took me like seven years. How many more games am, are we going to find out about that I didn't know about? Like, first it was the Star Wars, uh, the, the, the seat. The hot seat. <laughs> the hot, the seat. hot seat. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I mean that's the thing about Brian is he's got all these games. I'm like a lot of them I've never heard of. Oh, wait, hey, we got a pelvis. Oh, a pelvis. Oh, uh oh, -huh, Elvis the pelvis. Exterminator two. Yes, they hadn't heard of a Star Wars hot seat, Jabba Ruga. Um, I don't know how many more games. I'm I'm kind of like honestly, Golly Ghost is one of the last games. Oh come like, on, it's one of like yeah. it's serious. It's one of the last games I was looking for. I mean, I just. You're not looking for a Hellfire or um not really. Uh, really. I mean I, I mean I'm still buying stuff every now and then. I just bought two games out of um Jonathan Taylor's auction down in Florida. Uh Brian Jones is gonna restore the clay pigeon for me. <laughs> oh wow. Such a nice offer from him. I know. It was it was very generous. Hey, I have somebody that added me on Facebook while I'm here. Let's see before uh, Rob gets here if I can get it up. And and what's funny is that should I know this person? I don't I don't know who he What's his name? Daniel Watkins. Does anybody know? Uh, yeah. Sounds, sounds familiar. As a voice is FYC. Yeah. Oh, that's who that is? I know that guy. Yeah. Dude, D Daniel, how was I supposed to figure that out? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to be... Not, uh, uh, yo! I was like, wait, I think I know you, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> oh, if I could link a Spy, Wars, a Spy Hunter cockpit, I would have two of those in my house. <laughs> without, a, without a doubt. Uh, what about... Do you have... Uh, I guess you're not so heavy on the pinballs, right? It's more... I, I have a bunch of pins, but I, I don't really... I mean, I kind of have the pins I like right now. Have you ever played a, a back to back? I mean, a head to head NBA fast break. I haven't, no. Oh, but yes. I do have, I do have Alvin G. Football, or Alvin G. Soccer. Oh, oh there we I, go. We we got him. Hello. Hello, sir. Sorry, I'm sorry. Technical off. Uh, it's okay. We were we were filling. We were we were vamping. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sorry. We got you. No. We got you. That's all. That's all that matters. Uh, so. Welcome to the Welcome. show. Here we, here we are. So, uh, like, uh, you're right at the. Oh, we're getting a there little might be, feedback. There might be an echo. We need. We why, need... Are we, why are we echoing? Well, um, probably we just feedback, feedback from your speakers. Do you have headphones? How about that? <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Better. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. So we're right at the part where we're going to play a bumper to introduce you. So. Oh, you... Yes. Yeah, this is going to be good. You're going to love it. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. That's right. We're going to welcome Mr. Rob Fulop to the show. Mr. Rob, hey, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Ha, this is a really uh, a pleasure. Uh, and I know there's we've got some new chatters. That are uh, that are here because of you. So we've we've got a, a I don't know we've got a good I don't know how many people we got in the chat right now, Mark. Uh, I think there are we, we've been fluctuating between between twenty and twenty five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
but people will be listening to this as a recording, so sure. don't let that hinder your performance. Yeah. And and and, uh, uh, and you can mind your P's and Q's, or we'll mind ours. One of the two. So you just yes, uh, we don't care though. We'll Whatever you like. Lead. So <laughs> let a rip. <laughs> so uh, it's again great to have you on the show. Uh, yes. People kind of know who you are, uh, and I, I alerted the sixty five hundred two. Uh, Atari programmers group and a bunch of Atari uh, groups. So hopefully there's some of those guys in the chat tonight. Uh, but let's let's first uh, kick off. Now I, f- I first saw you in Howard Scott Warshaw's documentary. It was like a '90s documentary, uh, I think, that uh, called uh, "Once Upon Atari," which is now a book. Um, and 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 uh, and so you've known Howard for a lot of time. He's been on the show a couple of times. But uh, why don't you tell us how you got to Atari? Uh, let's start with that story. Well, I was, uh, it was my junior year of, at Cal Berkeley, and I had no plans for the summer, as most juniors don't. Uh, and I was going to meet a friend of mine, and he lived right behind the job center, and he wasn't home. So I went, he was late, because that was before there was email and the sky, cell phones. I don't even know how we got together without email or cell phones. <laughs> but some, he wasn't there, so I had nothing to do. So I walked down to the job center, which I had done once before in my life. And sure enough, somebody had just put a sign, a, a handwritten little little file card up on the board that said, here's a job at Atari to do sound effects. Uh, oh. So here's a number to call. And I just wrote the number down and called. And I was the first one to call. And just happened to just, it was one of those moments in life that just, Everything lines up, you know. Everyone yes. Needs, everyone, everyone needs a couple moments like that. Yeah. And that was that was mine. So I I called. I talked to Steve Calfey, and he said, "Come on down tomorrow." And I somehow borrowed a car and drove down to Atari, and and he just hired me. And it was just that simple. My job was to uh, they were making pinball machines, uh, and this was a machine called Superman. Oh yeah. Superman, and I, and I had to do the uh, a sound effects editor, a little mach- a little sixty five hundred two program. That let you edit sound effects. Nice. And that was my summer job. Uh, and I really loved it. And it was the Atari Coin Op Group. And uh, a year later, I was graduating or kind of graduating. And I went and I went back and said, can you hire me? And they said, well, we don't have any re- open recs right now. But if you go upstairs to the consumer division, uh, they are hiring. And we'll put in a good word for you. And I went upstairs and met a guy named George Simcock. And he hired me. And that was that. Nice, uh, and that was at the time when it was it was there were, there were no really jobs in software. There was no Microsoft. There was no Apple. There was no even Apple yet. There, there was a little bit of an Apple, but most of the most of the jobs were in a like a Lockheed doing big big you know sure. military things. There was no sure. software business. Yeah, yeah. So the people that did games were their own their own special crew, and that was just my that was that became my career. That's a very interesting. I, I, 1980, I guess. 1980? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, 1980. So Atari had been around for eight years by then. So, uh, Is that right? Well, all they had, they had done Pong, and they had done a couple coin ops. Yep. But they had they just were starting their consumer division. Now, uh, one of the things, when I looked when I looked you up on IMDb, um, which is funny oh. because there's a bunch of... Uh, there's a bunch of video game guys that are on IMDb because back in the early days of IMDb, I think that that was a good way for people to keep track of uh, developers, programmers, designers, and what they did in the industry. And so you can actually look up pretty much any Atari employee on there. And you actually have a couple of credits, uh, one for, of course, Once Upon Atari, but also uh, uh, for the video games that you designed. And, and, and Space Invaders comes up. Did you have any involvement with that? Yeah, yeah my, my second game was uh my first game was night driver and understand that i I had no idea what games to do i would i would go into the there was a game room there where you could go and play the atari coin op games oh yeah and i I went there every single day at lunch because i didn't know anyone and i thought this is great i can just go play games for free nice and and i was the only name on the sign-up sheet for the whole month i was the only person ever signed in and i was amazed at that and i was i was the only guy in there and all the games were there and you can That's play them. Awesome. And I picked uh, my first game. I picked Night Driver, which was a uh, just a bunch of no Night Driver. 
Yes, absolutely. <laughs> know, uh, that's why I always keep my paddle controllers close. <laughs> eight, eight dots. You just had to move eight dots around. That was that was. Uh, oh no way! way. <laughs> no, eight, eight on each side, so there's sixteen dots. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, they were moving, and then I did that. I and never thought of it as being an eight dots I because of say, the. I want to say yeah. Night Driver was probably one of the most faithful ports to an arcade game that existed on the 26. Yeah, I have a lot of like mm-hmm. warm childhood memories of like, oh, I am driving at night. This yeah. is awesome. <laughs> yeah, and also uh just a, as a sidebar, uh Night Night Driver did it did it also have a driver controller or was that later? That was the paddle controller. So yes. that was the, that was the normal paddle controller because there was that also was, a yeah, driver. Not many, not many games use the paddle controller. Okay. It's like okay. Hang and break out and you know. All right. So the driver controller must have come later. That was that looked like a paddle, but it was it was called a driver. So no, I, that wasn't no. that wasn't me. All right, that was, night driver was two K, and there was a horrible bug in night driver. There's a if you if you're going if you're turning left really 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 sharp to the left or to the yeah. right yeah to the left, I, the screen will roll. And I never, I never figured out why that was. I just took too many cycles. There's there's a <laughs> calculation that takes too long, and the screen rolls around and. You know, it was, it was during the, it was at a time when you know they didn't really care. <laughs> They're like, "That's an edge case. That's, You'll be fine." That's, that's... It was an edge case, and it was it was it, no one ever noticed, and no one cared. Um, you know, it's... that was my driver. It took me about eight months, and uh, so then the that... next game, I, I I moved to the the Atari eight hundred computer, the four hundred computer. Okay. And they told me to make they made, they wanted to do Space Invaders because they had licensed it from Kaido. Oh yep. yeah. Yeah, and of course I, being the 22-year-old auteur that I was, I decided I wasn't going to make a faithful copy of Space Invaders. I was going to modify it to be my version. Yes, yeah. I mean, take I the Pac-Man route. Yeah, I modified it, and, and, I, and I, and the day I finished it, the head of marketing came up to me and said, "Why don't you just copy the original? That's what people want." And I said, "Oh, well, no one, no one told me." So I just, <laughs> but I added a rocket ship to the last and put my name in it and did all this. Yeah, you know, it, it wasn't anywhere near what Space Invaders was. It didn't, you know, it, it was kind of the same theme, but it was my own version. And you know, I, at that point, I learned that well, people want the original. When they buy Space Invaders, they want the, thing that, the one that they know. They don't want my version. Now, uh, that that leads me to the third Atari title, Missile Command, which I want to say before you tell the story about your Missile Command, uh, probably my favorite port of any arcade game. <laughs> Wow, it's missile okay. command and um and the one of the reasons why was probably uh, in the early 80s i would go up to this this kid's house named mark carpenter and they were rich so they had an atari 2600 and all the games and we used to play uh missile command and we would turn off all the lights in the basement and, wow. and we would just we would just die on purpose just so we could see the flash explosion, yeah. At the end of the <laughs> game, where it flashes the room. At that time? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you own one, Adam? Because I know I own one. I, I yeah. I, now I have a twenty six hundred, and I have the game. Oh yeah, we're we're we 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 restore full size arcade games. I also oh, wow. have the original game. Yeah. <laughs> With the trackball, the whole thing, the real. One. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, Adam it. actually figured out that you can put a what? What's the name of the bowling ball that you can put in an Atari? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So they they so Atari originally used um, what were they called? Um, trackball. Yeah, it was a trackball, but but it was actually a bowling ball. Candle pin bowling. Candle pin bowling. Bowling. Ball. Candle pin. Yes. So an ident- identical size. Yeah. So I actually in my missile command and in my Atari footballs, I have candle pin bowling balls that are like marbleized, so they're not oh. just black, uh, and so that's kind of cool, but. But yeah, so I have a real missile command, and I have the Atari Twenty Six Hundred missile command, and uh, I love the flashing the end in the original game. But you couldn't do that on the Twenty Six Hundred. Well, we could, yeah, nothing, yeah, right. So, but it was like it, it felt like the arcade game. It was so close. Well, thank you. The reason was because I was so embarrassed with Space Invaders. <laughs> they didn't copy, so I decided, okay. If I do missile command, it's going to be as close as humanly possible. That was that was the goal. The goal was to replicate the arcade version. Yeah. And I had spent this previous summer in the coin op group, as I told you. So I knew the guys downstairs at the coin op group, 
because there was no communication between CoinOp and the consumer. Right. We didn't talk to each other, but I, I could go back and forth because I knew who they were and they were kind of my buddies. Yeah. So I could, I knew the programmer and so he showed me the algorithm for how the smart bomb worked and all that stuff. Oh, so that's cool. why that helped a lot to have the actual code to look at. That's awesome. Was that a 4K game? Missile Command was my first 4K game. Oh, I see. Interesting. Okay. Very nice. It was, it was originally 6K. Oh. And I had to remove a third of it. Oh no! Oh. That was a lot of, a lot of, a uh, lot, a of, lot, a of, lot, a of, lot, of, lot of fine tuning. You know, oh my! You know, I had to cut a lot of features out, and you know. So, but did you manage to get an Easter egg into that game? I did. I put an Easter egg. We were Easter eggs were all the rage then, because of Warren and Robinette. Robinette, yes. The first one, and we all wanted to do Easter eggs, so I put one in uh, in the bottom right corner of the screen. If you got no points, if you got zero points in the 13th game, it would come up RF. That's nice. <laughs> I also put an Easter egg in Space Invaders. There's a little, they would make an R and F as they walked, the, the, the monsters. <laughs> so we, were all about, we were all about the Easter eggs. So now, did you inspire Robin, Robinette, or did you? Did he inspire yeah, you? Us, yeah. He, oh, okay, he, yes. He was the first Easter egg. That's and, good. And the reason why it was the, all the rage is because you, you guys weren't allowed to, like, toot your horn about your games we were not allowed to do that and and and, and it was just something that we could sneak by because no one nobody nobody tested the games no one nobody played the games yeah i mean when i finished night driver i remember showing it to management i was so nervous and all the atari management came over and all the clipboards and they all came in and the president of atari said wow where did you ever think of that idea and i said well it's an atari coin up game <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Classic. Oh. Hey, Hand, what are you doing over here? I don't know. No, they, 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 they never played the game. They had no idea. That's funny. So, <laughs> what? You, you had a lot of restrictions back then on size. You mentioned having to take a third of the uh, program out for Missile Command. What is a fe what's a feature over time was the biggest feature you wrestled with taking out? For Missile Command? Oh, but just God. any game. Is there any game that you thought like that really challenged you to, you know, you had to finally bite the bullet, but it had well, to come after out. That, I, I learned not to make, not to let the games get too big. Okay. <laughs> the missile command was. I mean, I was. Honestly, I was 23. I went to. I went to Europe in the middle of doing the game. I my friend wanted to go to Europe. And I said, let's go to Europe. And I told them I'm going to go to Europe for five weeks. And they said you can't go because no one else can finish the game. And I said, well, I'll be back. Right. Did you backpack? <laughs> like you, you did the whole thing with the, the... We, did, we did a backpack, but we did the five dollar a day route. We did the you know, it's, you know, we did the whole thing. I love and it. I got back and then it was like, okay, I'm back. And they of course they hired me because they said, Okay, we're gonna hire you to finish it, but we're really bad at you. Right. And, you know, at that time I didn't really I mean I didn't, it didn't mean anything to me. Oh, right. <laughs> so, uh but you know, yeah, there was so I put too much code into it. It was, it was too fat. And I don't remember what features I had to take out. Maybe the other ships that could you could shoot or. Well, you know what it was. It was the. Uh, it used to be that you could shoot from three from three. three oh. Three. You know, and one you go back and forth, and that was that was hard to do because of the explosions. Right. Right. You know, that it, it flickered. It was called flicker command because it was every it was every other frame. You Did it? Frame, you put up the the monster or the explosions, and the next day you put the missiles, and we go back. Right. And forth. Did it used to say the end? Did you were you able to get no, that one? The end. Oh, never did that. Okay. We had 128 bytes of. I know. Can you imagine making a the end that big? <laughs> it's like half the. Freaking, yeah. The hardware missile command. You have to make the, the PAL version. The PAL version worked in Europe, and mm. PAL TVs only go at 50 frames a second instead of 60. Mm. So you have to adjust the game. They have to make. You have to really adjust everything. Oh and wow. That, 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 that was a pain. That was a real pain make it work at 50 frames a second because so, we only had one pal tv in the whole company <laughs> oh my god right so that was that was a problem <laughs> so one of our chatters andy sa0 says i'll say it again demon attack is the best 2600 game suck at pitfall yes wow. and uh and i just well, want to read i want to read a quick excerpt from the billboard magazine from april 30th 1983 so, wow. top video games, game designers, and manufacturers captured their first major industry awards here 
uh, when Billboard conferred its first annual video game awards. Named Video Game of the Year was Coleco's Donkey Kong, excepting for Coleco was blah, 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 Senior Vice President of Marketing, and Choplifter emerged as Computer Game of the Year. And we go a little bit further down the article, and Video Game Designer of the Year was Rob Fulop, who won his um, for his iMagic hit, Demon Attack, Fulop, and iMagic President William FX Grubb picked up the plaque, along with a, a young lady who's who, who is not mentioned in the article but is in the photograph. Uh, her name is Lori Laura Foti, uh, and then no. yeah, and then then and then right after it, it says the video game marketing award went to Activision's Pitfall, and I don't know if you remember this, but Jack Black was the kid in the Pitfall commercial. Was he? Wow. Yeah. He must have been a kid. Yeah, he was. He oh was yes. a Ten year old. I did not remember that. I didn't know who Jack Black was. No, nobody did. He was just a kid. But I remember that when Matt Groening sent us a letter, a kid named Matt Groening, he, and he showed us his artwork, and he wanted to make video games. Oh, that's funny. Yes. And it was awful. It, 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 his graphics were awful. We said, no, nah, we don't care. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it, would, it would have been, yeah. He really was, showed you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he absolutely did. You know, but we had no idea who he was, but he really wanted to make video games. That's hilarious. Did, it, it, Dilbert, oh. right? You saved him, Matt Groening. Good times. So, so uh, yeah, so that was an, so at Atari, you know, it sold really well the Missile Command game, and and that year they gave me a bonus, and the oh. bonus like a an Armor Star. It was a, tur- a coupon for a turkey for a free oh my God. Armor Star turkey. No. Yeah, I absolutely have it. I still have it. That's the uh, that was the <laughs> moment I decided that. That I'm going to leave Atari. Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. They're like, "Oh, you did such a great job." You sold expecting like a thousand dollars. That would have been so much. That I would have. Been... I would have been like, "How about a hot tub? Let's go." Yeah. Oh. <laughs> to me, I remember. I remember realizing that a thousand dollars would buy me a, a car, and it was. It would. Sure. I all I needed was a thousand bucks. No, and they gave. Me, I couldn't believe it. They gave me the turkey. That would have changed the landscape of your career, if they had given would've. you a thousand dollars. And I would have. I would have probably done. You know. Pac-Man, I don't know. Oh my gosh, <laughs> let's talk about that. Right. Todd was on the show uh what six he months was? ago? Yes. Yeah. And uh and if you had done Pac-Man, I'm sure you would have done way better well, than I Todd. Know, it, was, it was a real challenging thing to do. Uh, <laughs> but understand that when I left and there was a second startup that came out of Atari, that they all panicked. Management panicked. And all of a sudden they said, Okay, now from now on we're gonna have royalties. And and Todd was just assigned Pac-Man, and it was like giving him a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. because uh, because by that time they had established the uh, the the program for for residuals, and so and that was that was because we left because we yeah. they don't want more programmers to leave. Yeah, and uh-huh. and, and then they pre then they package that thing with all the Atari systems, and then co- yeah. count it right. as a sale. So yeah, they're they, like, forget about combat. And and Todd just like sitting there, let you know, Watching the jack roll in. So okay, so you, so you and who uh, decided to leave Atari, and what's the well, story? Well, there was a guy named Bill Grubb who was the who who was at marketing, and he got a couple of programmers together. He asked Dennis Coble, my boss, to get some programmers together, and Dennis asked me, and then some guys from uh, Mattel came, and we did we did games for Mattel and for Atari. That was called the company was called the Magic. It was my first startup, and. Uh, we were we were inches away from going public, and uh, oh. we didn't do it. We were literally like a week away, and Atari announced that they had to have a bad quarter, and that was when the whole thing fell apart. Oh, man. Now, but yeah, but for our first game was Demon Attack, and that was uh, I decided I wanted to make a game that was really really good because I was really pissed off at Atari, mm-hmm. and I modeled uh, Galaxians. It was a game where. Uh, where, where, where it was like space invaders, but the the guys would peel off and come fu- come fire at you. Remember Galaxian? Oh yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah, so Galaxian was the model for a Demon Attack. Now, when I was a kid, I went to a rummage sale, and I picked up a Vic Twenty, and it had a bunch of games in it, cartridge games, and I knew nothing about the computer, um, but I was excited about the cartridges, and I found all these text based games that that I wasn't really interested in at first. And I swapped in and out cartridges, and then I put in Demon Attack. On the VIC-20? On the VIC-20. Yeah. And I thought, this is an arcade game. 
<laughs> I thought this is like this is legitimately fun. And I don't, I, remember, I don't remember who did it. I don't even know if we did it. Oh, I Maybe played that we, we the heck out of that. that game. But it wasn't a it was an iMagic cartridge. Um uh, or Imagic. And, and the character uh, moved moved well. What's oh, the yeah. correct pronunciation of Imagic? And who I came I, up I, with it? I magic. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Magic, I guess. I don't know. It sounds good. Either or. And and whose idea was that? <laughs> uh, what the, the name? The name, yeah. Well, I don't remember. I mean, it, was, it came out of a brainstorming session, you know. Oh, very nice. Speaking of brainstorming sessions, do you have any fun stories about Atari brainstorming sessions? They had. We had. They they. Brainstorming to a tour meant they would put fifty people into a room. Oh no! Wow. We all went down to Monterey, and, and it was just like a perk that we bring all the marketing people and all the sales people, and they all wore their jeans, and uh, <laughs> so it was and, casual. It, it, was, it was it was very formal. You know, you would go around and, and present your. You'd have like three minutes, and there was there was no discussion. It wasn't really what I call brainstorming. It was more like it was just like a a, a thing that they did, and we ended up with a list of games. And then we'd go back and make whatever games we wanted. No. <laughs> there was no there was no there was it was it, yeah, it was it was kind of a joke it was like marketing was brainstorming were there any games that you started to try to make and then you were like nah we're not gonna do this i made a game i did another game after a missile command and i don't remember what happened to it it, it, it never it, it got it it, it 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 was then they started doing consumer testing and i think it tested badly and it was about halfway done and it was a it was a, it was a fly over you fly over Flying over a landscape and dropping, but it was like first person missile command. It was oh, too, wow. very, very ambitious. <laughs> so all my first games were all they were all like we call them death from above. It was all you always had something above you would drop drop bombs on something below it. Right. And that was always what we did for years. That was the uh, the model of all games. Everybody loved that. Everyone loved them. They still do. Right. And was, that was the thing. Right. Exactly. <laughs> But Demon Attack was was a, was the first we did at a Magic, and it, and it did really well. And it was more because it was it was more because the way the things moved, the little characters moved well. So we had learned how to do that, and that was uh, it was just a little trick. It was just a little software trick. Like uh, somebody made an algorithm for like flight accurate, you know, because it, it they definitely didn't move mechanically. It seemed very natural. Well, you know the way, the way it worked is that it, you were it was. It was um, uh, there was eight bits that would keep track of the position, and the other eight bits would be the fractional position. Oh. So it would, it would let you do it would let you move like three pixels every two frames, or four pixels every three frames. That's beautiful. So it would be very precise instead of like two pixels per frame, which would make a thing move really fast, and it was easy to hit. So with that, we used a lot of uh, acceleration and deceleration, a lot of gravity. So it, that was that was a trick to making stuff move well. <laughs> nice. Go ahead. Mark. What was what was your favorite game that you worked on? You mean Atari? You were on the Atari? Just in general, you have quite a list here. I mean, all the way up through My dogs. I worked on was, was dogs. Was dogs. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was that was when I really got it together. That was a well-timed, very very nice. You know, to me, it was a very yeah, you know, I feel like we got everything right. But yeah, you know, I mean, I, I like, I never play any of the games, but I, but I like Cosmic Arc a lot. Cosmic Arc was my first original game. I really like that cool. game. I, I thought it's a very original uh, theme. And I, I just, I, I always, uh, I never really played it until I got into my adult years. But in, ah. my, tw- in my 20s, I started playing it. And I'm like, this is a really fun game. So. Well, that was my first original game. Everything else had had been a pretty much a clone from the arcade. Yeah, which I believe is right. I and mean, that was the way you had to learn. That was the way we all learned how to do it. We, we cloned arcade games. Yeah, and people like Howard, whose first game was an original game, like what was it, uh, Yars, Yars Revenge. Revenge, and and Carla Maninsky, who did Dodge Them. And those guys were really really good. I but, mean, to come in and do an original game on the Atari right off the bat was a really <laughs> ambitious effort. But Yar's Revenge was an accidental original game because it was supposed to be a port of uh, Star Castle. Star Castle, right? And then, then, then they changed it, right? Yeah, which is great because it's it, it's like my it is one of my favorite Atari twenty six hundred games of all time. You know, yeah, it's a great game. 
Yeah. You understand? There was nobody. Nobody was in charge. Nobody was like telling people what to do. Yeah. You just made a game and you'd leave it up running on your lab. You'd leave it running. And if people were play, if people started playing it at lunch, the game would get better. If, if no one played your game, then the game kind of dropped out and yeah. you stopped working on it. And some guys worked there for years and never got a game out. Oh, man. They, they were, but there was, no, there was no management. There was no one telling you what game to do or how to do it. I mean, it truly was just, it was just, there's never been another creative environment like it. Where there was just no, there's no schedule. You know, you just have to get it done when you got it done. And if you didn't get, if you didn't get it done after two years, they came and talked talk to you about it, you know. But oh. <laughs> there was no, there was no, the Art Revenge started out as, yeah, Star Castle, and then he changed along the way and no one cared. <laughs> Billy Seven in the chat says he'd play Cosmic Arc. I'm guessing it, he meant, said for his, but for ours. And love the speed increasing to insanity levels. Wow, yeah. Well, you know, I can never play the games at the higher levels. So we have to either hire a kid to go play it that can show us how it was too hard or we just have to, <laughs> we just have to guess. I mean, Demon Attack, I, I never thought anybody would get past 84, 84 waves, which is how many how many different variations there are. Right. There are 12 monsters and seven color, color combinations and 12 times 7 is 84. So I never thought there'd be an 85th level. I figured that was that was enough, and the game would just go blank after that. Oh no, really? Yeah, and, the, and a kid wrote in like a week after we released it. Uh, hey, I finished man, what I do now. There's always weird kids like that. Yeah, but I, mean, I had no idea. I mean, it was way beyond my ability to play. Right. It's very, hard, very hard to adjust the game when you, when you play better than you can play. Right. 18, right. So there was 84 levels, and they beat him like in a day. In, in, in within a week, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Insane. So then, what did you do? You like reprogram the game, and so you know, it was just one little loop that 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 made the screen go black. I figured that's what the game would do when you beat it; it would just go black. And I just took the loop out because again, there was no room. There was no room left in the in the, in the program. There oh, was, so you couldn't really you couldn't, anything, yeah. couldn't yeah. fix that bug. It's just no, I could fix the bug. I, I, it didn't stop anymore. It just kept going. Oh, it just kept going. I it see. Was harder though. So of the of the twenty six hundred games that you made, was what was the most? What was the one that used the most memory? Most. Oh, Fathom. That was the one I did next. That was eight meg or eight eight k. Okay. Eight meg, yeah. So eight. Funny. Oh my god! Can you imagine? No. <laughs> I can't believe we used to think, dang, eight k is a lot. <laughs> it, it was a lot. Right. It was. Right. I mean, banking back and forth. I'm not sure how that worked, but was yeah, that the? To, yeah, yeah they, had to, they figured out how to do an 8K card, and then now I think David Crane did 128K. I think his last the circus game was like the last thing he did was like a oh, thousand K. You know? Wow! Oh my goodness! <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we, can you can you tell us a little bit like at a root at a high level uh, why the Atari was so hard to program for? It was hard because. The, the microprocessor actually constructed the image, right? There was no RAM that 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 was there was no uh, bitmap, so basically there was two two little two things that were called players, two objects that were eight bits, and you have to you have to display them and then you have to move them and then and display them again. So I'm I start drawing the drawing the scan lines, and once I displayed my players, which are like pong paddles, uh, then I had then I had no, no, nothing else I could show. Other, other, otherwise, I had to move them, move them down, move their position down, so then the scan line would, would move them, would, would, would use them again, and then I have right. to change the graphics. Okay, I kept moving them. So a game like, uh, even a game like 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 uh, Night Driver, you know, there's these two dots, and then once once I start, once I was finished displaying them, I had to move the dots down and use them again. So then, the, the, and then when you're at the bottom of the screen, then you can do all the math to figure out what happens in the next frame. Wow! Oh man, that's like, was, that's like constructing uh, the display was was half the battle, and that took up that took about three quarters of your processor time. While while you were drawing every scan line, there's 192 scan lines, so you had a, only a little bit of time to until the, the electron beam went to the top to figure out what happens in the next frame. So hmm. essentially, Atari 2600 was the stop motion animation of video games. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I look at them as silent movies, like they were silent movies. I mean, they were really, <laughs> when we worked out, the, it was really basic. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, that, it, it, and we also got, we also did five product cycles. We did five games, six, I did six games 
no one does six games on, on a system now. Yeah. By the time they do the third game, there's a new system. Yeah. Oh wow. Right. Did so, you did you have like a common framework that you would use? Like yeah, yeah. Oh, that is good. Yeah. And, and, and was that yours, or did you guys all yeah, share that? It was. It was it, it came from from I don't know from God. I you know <laughs> when I was started Atari, I, I used one of David Crane's old frameworks. Interesting. And, and you guys had development stations for that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, we, we had development stations, right? Yeah. Yeah. But there was no there was no training. You just we were handed a program. I think I used one of David Crane's, and I would just study it and figure out how to do stuff. And you know, awesome, That's crazy. It's crazy. But but a lot of people learned, finally learned it. They, you have to uh, reverse engineer the system. The, the problem with the Atari 2600 is there's so little memory, 128 bytes. I mean, that's how much, that's how much, that's how much memory was in the, in the, in the chip. I mean, that was it. Yeah. 128 bytes is nothing. I mean, you cannot keep a graph, you know, you know how much RAM they use now. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's yeah. ridiculous, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's gratuitous now. It's like, oh, I'm going to use a gig. Oh, what? Yeah, right. It's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely insane. 128 bytes. <laughs> Yeah. And that included the stack. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. Wow. Yeah, every bit was really, every bit was precious and you had to learn how to really, you know, you had to crunch it into, into it only fit into 4K of memory. So that was a trick too, and how you, how you minimize the memory that you use. So the, the, the Atari, you know, those Atari 400 and 800 machines, like, were they adopting a lot of what the, the, the 2600 did or were no, they on they their had, own they stack? Had 64K of memory. I mean, it was just like vast amounts of memory. Amazing, you know, it was a bitmap, so it was it was it was felt like wow, it's like luxury. Well, and in the I believe the four hundred and the eight hundred are very closely related to the fifty two hundred. Yeah, they are yeah. right. The fifty two hundred is like an extension. Yeah, and uh, and unfortunately- all, that stuff, all that stuff, you know, you learn. You know, I, I don't know how many systems I've worked on, but the last what I did. I was doing a cryptocurrency game, and, and within two weeks, we've maxed out the machine. I mean, you're always maxing out whatever resources you have in terms of time and, and space and all that stuff. Someone yeah. in the chat had mentioned that you had, or maybe it was on the forums, that you had finished a game that you wanted to finish. Uh, one that was incomplete. Is that true? Or did you, or, or were all the games that you worked on? A 2600 game? Yeah. Yeah, there's one I put out called Actionauts. That was that was that was an unfinished game. And what I was never called? finished it. And I, and I kind of made it. I, I, I took out the bugs and I released it about ten years ago. It's just a, as a as a as a collector collector item thing. You know, I sold like two hundred. You know, I made two hundred of them. Oh, that's nice. Cool. But it wasn't. Uh, nice. You know, and I got a lot of comments that well, the game's not as good as his other stuff. It's like, well, there's a reason it was unreleased. <laughs> right. There's a reason. You, know, you, take, you go through the archives of the Rolling Stones and the songs are never going to be as good as the it, it, It's, it's like people movie. complaining about the deleted scenes for a movie. And I'm like, yeah, yeah they were deleted yeah. for a reason. They were deleted because they like it. Yeah. They suck. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's, it's they, funny because with, with collecting cabinets now, the, the rare games a lot of times, the ones that did terrible in the arcade, so they got converted, and they become valuable now to the collectors because you can't well, find yeah. them. The collectors market's all the really bad stuff. Yeah, it's like, you know, if it was one copy of a game is out there, it's worth a gazillion dollars. Yeah. It's the worst yep. game ever, right? It's not to be a good <laughs> game. You know, it was never made. Have you ever uh, had a desire to make a new Atari Twenty Six Hundred game? No, I have no desire to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very. Just, it sounds very painful. <laughs> Well, it was. I mean, it was. It, it was kind of a puzzle. It was a cool puzzle, but it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like going back to old jigsaw puzzles. I mean, I, I don't really need to. <laughs> I think Dave Crane did one. He did one last year, right, two years ago. Okay. Oh and my somebody, gosh. Yeah, he did. He did the, the circus thing. It was. Uh, it was. It was really cool. It was 128 K. Okay. Yeah. It was oh, wow. times bigger than any game ever made. It was beautiful. So. Oh. Uh, you you start this little company called the Magic. Uh, there, actually, if if you Google it, there's a documentary out there you can watch that, that yeah. sort of chronicles uh, iMagic starting up and why they were doing it, and the and the video game crash and why iMagic failed. Yeah, it makes me cry. Yeah, yeah, it's a sad video, but I love it. It's really really a great slice of Americana. Yeah, it's, it, it just it's it's the whole thing. We thought we were really going great, and, and then yeah, you know, we had the whole management team. The oldest guy was like 27, and we're all like buying Porsches and, you know, we thought this is it. You know, this is it. <laughs> now, when you when you started 
learning about the business because you you, you basically left Atari as a, as a developer programmer yeah. designer, and then you you all of a sudden you're like oh oh shit I can make a ton of money uh, as an owner because now there's no overhead I I don't have to pay the developer I am the developer, uh, right. so now you're you're like rolling in the dough. You, would you say at that point in your life you were kind of bitten by the bug to run business because you, you, you have a bunch of startups that you've been involved with and, and companies. You know, I, I was really, I didn't, I wasn't smart. I mean, I, you know, obviously in retrospect, I should have got into the Nintendo, the Nintendo, I mean, came out of nowhere and those guys became, you know, yeah. Yeah. Nintendo just became right. Atari just was the most bungled franchise got to be in history yeah. in American history. I mean, we're, we're thinking about how, how big of a brand it was and what it, what it represented. And they just, Went away. Nintendo came and just ate them for lunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Atari was everywhere. Yeah, and the brand has survived over fifty years, but uh, it, it's really a shadow of what it was. So no, it's not. It's not I don't look at this. There's no Atari anymore. I mean, yeah, there's no, right. Uh, uh, right. There's a fun interview to watch, though. Uh, uh, the new CEO of Atari, Atari is actually from Minneapolis. Here, uh, his name is Wade uh, Rosen, and he and Nolan Bushnell have a a cute little interview that they did for the 50th anniversary of Atari's lit, uh, branding. So uh, that's, that's interesting to watch. Uh, but, it, well, but, but Atari just licenses their old, their old IP, right? They don't make it. Oh yeah. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, no, well, I mean, actually uh, maybe they Brian, do have that. Maybe Brian would like to answer that question. <laughs> yeah. Brian, Brian actually works with Atari. Yeah. So we just, I just licensed a bunch of Atari IP. So, um, they, they really, it's, you know, there's a couple of different, the pro it got split up and divided and put back together so many times that a lot of the IP is mixed up all over the place, but they are kind of just a clearinghouse now of licensing IP. Right. And, and that's what they do. So we actually, they, they, they did a bunch of NFTs, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, and what, what we got involved with them on is recreating a couple of the old games, the old like full coin op games. Uh, yeah. That are harder to find that actually people want. <laughs> you mean the you mean the arcade games? You mean the originals? Yes. Yep. Yep. The cabinets. Yep. So yeah. we'll be doing actually right now finishing off not an Atari. It's Tato Ice Cold Beer, and then that one will go to market probably in August, in September. But what? what, we'll, what the market collectors? Or who's the market? Who's the customer for that? Well, so the the irony of this is that um, <clears throat> pinball machines are so popular right now. Yeah. that a lot of the operators want physical machines to put out on site, but there's a lot of bars they can't fit uh, a pinball machine into. And so when we showed it at IAPA, they went crazy because they were like, we can fit this anywhere at a bar, and it's obviously cheaper than a pinball machine to sell. So they're just looking at it as something they can put into, you know, a you know two foot by two foot space at a bar and, there's no and make money. There's no, like, there's no, like... The bumper doesn't go break and all that kind of stuff. Right? So our, our, the ice cold beer is mechanical. So it's a ball and a rod. But then the other one, uh, so the other, the games that we're licensing from Atari are focused more at some of the, there's just a ton of arcade bars in the country now. Um, and that's really kind of the prime focus of those style games. Um, at this point, there's, I can't remember the number, but it's hundreds it's of, of arcade bars. It's quite unreal how many you places go in and you, you go in and you play an old, an old video game either old video games or new video games but it's just been an, like the, it's the that retro style yeah. approach has become incredibly popular so um and i think i, I mentioned it last time on the show we're going to be showing off at iapa this year but like one of the games we licensed was warlords yeah so yeah. so that's going to be a in, fun in a, one in a coin op cabinet correct Wow, that's fun. The original so, Warlords. Yeah, it's a wow. uh, which which I it's a game I love and as a four player cocktail is a hard one to find and a, re a neat game to play. So it is it there's maybe a handful of games you know like we mentioned before that are, meet that criteria of being kind of rare, hard to find, but also are fun. And yeah. Warlords happens to be one of those games. I have that, one. Um, it takes you a minute to learn how to play, right? Yeah. Yep. Mark has yep. one. I have one. Yep, I have one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But they, I, they, made a bunch of, they made a bunch of cocktail ones that were all just, they look like, a little, like you can have a drink at it. it was like, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's the one I have. Yeah. 
and and, and and a very a very interesting thing that happened recently is that that because of the resurgence of the bar arcade, people will <laughs> drink around these things, especially games that are multiplayer, like war games. Four people play at the same time, so a lot of these games where you can do two or more players. The, you know, the, the, there's a resurgence, like a rebirth of the game. Like, oh my gosh, this game's amazing. And it's a table. I can put my beer on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, any game yeah. that you can play while you're drinking a beer is a good game. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, the, and, the, and, 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 and that's what a lot of the, the newer games will, don't let you do. But you just, you want to have, you just want to have a beer and play the game. Pac-Man is perfect for that. Yeah. Well, that's and, and that's kind of the neat thing about the, the resurgence right now is it the focus is really on kind of that social atmosphere. I mean, the focus isn't necessary, but the games are doing well in that atmosphere are these social games. Like, you know, uh, Namco to come up with Pac-Man Fever, which has almost nothing to do with Pac-Man, except that there's a Pac-Man on there and it's eating dots, and there's ghosts. But, like, the game's a complete revamp. Uh, but there's four players, and so it's fun. I don't know why. We, can, we thought about it. You know, there should be an arcade drinking game, you know, a video game where it tells you to drink. And there was still a lot of, a lot of drinks out there. Yes. <laughs> and, and, the more, and the more you drink, the worse you play. I don't know why they don't do that. We were, we were joking about you do a Warlords game with, like, a little drop hatch on the, on the beer mugs. So yeah. if you lose, your beer goes away. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, you lose it. Or you could do, have you seen those uh, mugs that will fill the beer from the bottom? You could put no. a bunch of those on. They have these mugs now for bars where they, they have a little, it's super cheap. They, they're throwaways. They put the glass down on this little rubber washer and it fills the beer from the bottom of the cup. Right, right. I haven't seen that. Yeah. So you could put those on a station and whoever wins gets a beer. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I mean, we had talked about it. Who That's owns neat. the Who owns the Magic brand now? Is that Activision's Magic property? Was bought by Activision, and I guess yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago. That's it crazy. It's not worth anything anymore. Bummer. But they, they licensed out, you know, like they put they put like all the games onto one little chip, and you can put them into this little thing that you can buy for like fifty bucks. <laughs> right? which, I, which I love that you can do that. <laughs> all right. So That's besides crazy. Imagic, uh, what other startups have you been involved with? Well, then I did my own after that. I, I did one called uh, PF Magic. Uh, and that was a, a start of that. And, and the original idea there was it was, it was going to be a piece of hardware that you were going to be able to play Nintendo and Sega games over the phone. That was the original idea. Ooh. And AT&T was an investor and Sega was an investor. And the, 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 it, was, it was a really cool thing. You could play Street Fighter over the phone. And that was pre-internet. Yeah, what, what year was that? Oh, it was 1990. No, no, no. It was 80, 87, maybe. Wow. 80, wow. Yeah, that, that was PF Magic. And that was a guy named John Skull, who was the inventor of desktop publishing at Apple and I. And he came and joined me. And we, we, we got Roberts and Stevens and AT&T to put up some money. And they were a partner. AT&T was a partner because they, they had all the phone lines. And they were going to make this thing. There was a while, there was about five minutes where at t was going to go into the whole me- multimedia business. That was a big thing for them. And then one day, they just, they just decided they weren't going to do it. They just decided, oh, we're not going to do this. And it, wow. was too, it was too expensive. The, 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 you know it's going to be too expensive. But, you know, at t showed up in the Sega booth at, at a CES. And that was a big a big CES for us. And, and the president of at t showing it with the president of Sega. And it was, you know. You know, that was when we got our investment money. And uh, so that didn't happen. And so we didn't know what to do. And we had we had a game called Balls. And Balls was a fighting game on the uh, on the Sega and Nintendo with, with little spheres. And that was our, our flagship game for that system. It was called The Edge. Yeah, you can see it you, you see all on the web. Edge mm-hmm. 16. And then that didn't happen. So we ended up making the, we took the balls and we turned it into uh, uh, the pet. The, the little digital dog, and that was that became our flagship, our product. Oh, nice! And that dog, good. that dog came out because I had done a game called Night Trap uh, for Sega, not for Sega actually, for for Nolan. And Night Trap came out finally, and it, and it was it got so much controversy because it got so many people didn't like that it was the real video. It was the first game you could play with real video, right? And then teenage girls that ran around and monsters chasing them, and it was. 
it, 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 it was it was an embarrassment to me. But you know, I got so kicked around by the the they were it was presented to the Senate when they, they had oh no it was that thing they had they had to decide Joe Lieberman decided that it was the worst thing ever oh, and uh, <laughs> they had to make a rating system for games and that, it was so embarrassing that I decided I was going to make the cutest game that there ever was and that's where we got the dog, that's where we came out with dogs because it was it was, just, it was embarrassing to have a uh... you never heard of night trap. I have. I think uh, mm-hmm. I do remember some hearings about it, but yeah, yeah, the, all the famous <laughs> hearings, and yeah, the, the, the you know the, the U.S. Senate was involved. It was really, you know, it was, it was a big deal. Wait, yeah, that, so were you running a BBS somewhere in the '80s? Is that true? I was. I, I did start. I did run a BBS for about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, about that. I well, I ran a BBS as well. I wasn't sure if I ever logged into you or not, but probably not. I, mean, I think like sixteen people. <laughs> Or so. What was your platform of choice for your BBS? Commodore 64. Oh, nice. Because <laughs> I had made a game for the Commodore, and my publisher backed out and left me with the game, and I, I basically had nothing to do with it. I gave it away. I gave right. the game away, and people had to log into the BBS to get on a mailing list. And it was yeah, it was pretty early. That's kind of uh, cool. Yeah, it was it was cool. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, and Night, Night Trap was really the game that. Uh, started that whole the whole uh, we got to put ratings on games we got to yeah yeah it was all because yeah not night job was was a big and yeah. so it's it's been Street Fighter too no not Mortal Kombat Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat yeah all the, yeah. the and the and Sega actually didn't have blood in the first version you had to use a code well they did it was purple and then you use the blood code to unlock it, the red blood yeah the red blood they, they also yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe this? We're talking about this <laughs> now. We're like, it's they, like they, realistic. They banned, they banned the game because there was a there was a uh, a woman. There was a, a, a you were in an art gallery and there was an image on the wall of a woman suckling a child, and that was like they went too far with that. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> they were so woke back then. So <laughs> you rip out a guy's heart and eat it. You know that was that was, yeah. that was, fine. That was okay though. Yeah, that was fine. That was fine. But rip, Kalim- was Kalimar. Yes. Kalimar, Kalimar. <laughs> but that Kalimar. was when we, you know, we did Night Trap and we did a lot of uh, that was where the Hollywood meets, meets Silicon Valley thing started. We would go down to we went down to LA and try to get people that made movies to make games. And that whole that whole merging of Silicon Valley and Hollywood was that that era. Amazing. We call it the silly we call it Sillywood. Yeah. <laughs> Silicon Valley meets Hollywood. It was uh yeah, we did Star Trek, we did I did a game with Jane Fonda, I think. Yeah. What? Yeah, I see, we did an exercise game. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. We never did the game. We we, we had we had a meeting with her. She took us to El Pollo. That sounds good. So 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 was Jane Fonda cool or what was that yeah, like? She took us to El Pollo Loco. Yeah. That was lunch. Yeah, I remember that. And she, that was she was doing her exercise videos, and we were going to do a Jane Fonda exercise game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That would have been a lot, awesome. of, a, lot, a lot of those conversations. I, I definitely could see that even happening, but interesting. Oh my gosh! Yeah, we did a, a rock video. Yeah, we did a lot of that kind of stuff. That was the that was the ill-fated uh, Nemo system, the the Hasbro. For Hasbro. Oh yes, the rock video system pre 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 uh, the Philips uh, most uh, in uh, CDI CDI yeah ah uh, that's it. Uh, CDI was a great system. I love CDI. Yeah. The controller was a little, uh, uh, it was easily breakable, but, but it was a cool. Well, it wasn't, it was, they didn't want you to do games. They, wasn't, they didn't want you to do games. Yeah. And a lot of those games were laser. Well, like, I know there was a couple of Laserdisc ports for the CDI. Yeah. <laughs> it was for a lot of technologies. Yeah. The Laserdisc is a whole other one now. Yeah. But I, I but mean, I the CDI that. was really cool. They sold the uh, CDI movies. You could, you could get uh, uh, yeah yeah there was yeah they I remember they proved that you could not do one hour of video on a CD that was that was like a mathematical proof yeah and then yeah. six months later they did it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's funny and then and then of course DVDs come out and then they have dual layer DVDs, DVDs. Came out, right yeah yeah and I, and I believe there was the VCS that the the the, the V the VCS format that that no the VHS, VHS the, yeah. the, the the tape system that killed video games for a while. That was that was such a big deal when the VHS system came out. 
Oh, you could buy a movie and you could have a movie and watch it at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, uh, you're into crypto a little bit. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I, I look. I'm looking at crypto. I mean, it, it's. It, it's like. Uh, I think it may never happen. The whole idea of the NFT games. It may. Uh, it's. It's. It, it's very scammy. There's a lot of really scammy. Scammy. Yes. Yeah. It kind of feels scammy. It just. <laughs> it doesn't feel like a game. And all the people I'm meeting are all like. You know, they're experts, and they last year they were like living at home and with their mom. And you know. meet me at this Italian restaurant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, no. <laughs> Uh, out back of it yeah <laughs> Axie, park. Axie infinity was a, was a big game last year and then it became a, a big scam and it kind of, it's kind of blowing up now hey so what are you working on like what's your like what's your what are you working on like today i'm, I'm, I'm doing a start I'm, I'm working on a startup that that seems to into trying to figure out what kind of good games you can make with crypto nice but it's not it's not clear what where it where it really uh it kind of is like gambling. You know, all these things like cryptocurrency are kind of like gambling. And gambling's kind of illegal in the United States. So that's <laughs> kind of the problem. It is. Well, let me tell you. Uh, so I'm on TikTok. I have about 150,000 followers. Oh, wow. And what I have been doing is I've been programming games that people can interact with with the live chat. Right? Wow. So, like so, well, this is, this is going to sound silly. In the movie War Games... <laughs> You've seen yeah. that one, right? Yeah. That war games is what inspired me to be a programmer, wow. and so I, uh, you know, anything that Matthew Broderick's character typed, uh, you know, I will show you on screen in the format of an old terminal, and I'll, you know, I also play a clip from the movie, but it'll also like speak using a synthesizer that's built into the browser. Anyway, when I run he's this, ta- he's, ta- he's talking to you. What's that? He's talking to you. They're talking to the program. They just are, oh, it's okay. the camera's just pointing at the screen it. and it's a picture of a terminal. <laughs> and they're like, people are like, holy shit, this is amazing. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Cause I just did this too, like as a, you know, as a goof, you know? <laughs> and can you interact with the text and can you type back? Yes. I mean, you know, it is somewhat conversational. So I think what I think what you should look into is these these live, you know, streams that people have like on Twitch, because like we're on Twitch right now, but we're not we're not as interactive with our chatters. But if you program something that they can visually interact with on the screen, people are entertained by that. I mean, I know it's not an NFT, but the way I monetize it is that people send gifts and those gifts are worth money in your account. And so you can, oh, you know, fun. so like I track the gifts with a leaderboard. I let you do certain things in the chat that you can't do unless you've sent a gift and stuff like that. Is right. That so, yeah. so, you know, and, and, and you're designing it, you're making it. Yeah. I just, and what's funny is I wrote it in pure JavaScript for fun. Yeah. Right. And so, right. <laughs> So I, I'm just saying, t- take that idea and run with it. Maybe you know, th- that's a the monetization model is already there. You just have to like somehow entertain people. You know, we talked to uh, you know, Netflix was going to do some interactive stuff for a while. Netflix, yeah, what happened to that? You know, they found out what we found out 15 years ago with Night Trapper that you know interactive movies, no one cares. Oh man, you know, you know they don't work well. But we we talked about some ideas. There was one we were going to do where you could. You could text, you could use your phone and you could text people in the movie, right? And they would answer the phone and you could send them a text and they would respond. If you text the right thing, they would respond accordingly. Oh, they that was... But, you know, they, they, they spent a lot of money and they, they had they made like two or three shows. And did you see them? There was one on uh, Black Mirror. I did see the Black Mirror episode. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it was that good, right? It was, you know, you, you could choose. Do you want to go get Pepsi Cola or Diet, Diet Coke? You know, it wasn't... It wasn't... Right, but, but, but the problem with that is that nobody's paying extra on top right. you know so so the, the the whole gifting idea i think in twitch i think does that as too right you can make donations to the person that you're viewing on twitch but right. at, at least with tiktok which by the way is an amazing platform i highly recommend checking it out uh you know that that whole gifting the person that's you know streaming the chat like i have i have the war games version and then i also have another this is going to sound strange and I'm sorry that I'm turning this into about me, but there, there's this thing that people like on Twitch where somebody's trying to sleep 
and you are annoying them by giving gifts and 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 like loud music is playing or a loud they're, they're, they're on they're on live twitch and they're trying to sleep Yes, and and but you send a gift like it plays like a fire alarm or water sprays on that person that's sleeping. You have to, you have to pay to send them a gift. You, you do have to pay, and then but but they like it. They're like, oh look, I just dumped a bucket of water on him. Right. <laughs> but it costs twenty dollars. Of course, then you do have to have like a live person that is willing to do this, which is why the war games thing is more interesting because I can just. Well, I'll, I'll look at that. <laughs> I'm pretty convinced that. I went to a, a retro show about about six months ago, and I'm I'm pretty convinced that there's a market for for like older people. Yes. Who who like who used to like playing games, but the games right now are just too hard. And I just think you know games that are easy that you can beat in like two days. I, why don't they make those? You know, <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to play a game that, that takes me two days to beat it or one day to beat it. It's a rental, and because they're all so hard. Right. So, yeah. so technically difficult. Yep. And uh, yeah, I believe there's a lot of older people that want to play these games, but they just don't want to get into figuring out Red Dead Redemption and all the books. And, <laughs> you, know, you, have to, you have to read books on how to play, you know. Right. One yeah. of the games that I play uh, very regularly is called Retro Bowl. Oh. Uh, and it's a uh, it's sort of a knockoff of uh, Super Tecmo Bowl from uh, Tecmo. Uh, from that was on nintendo and it's for ios and android and it's like a thumb football game you just you can pass you can run you can run dodge you can play the game with what was the thumb. original the original platform uh it's ios it, it's an original oh. game uh it's called retro bowl and you get to you pick your team you uh you, based on their strengths uh you can now you can scout uh, and I'll and I'm not even I'm like I'm not, I'm not even a huge football fan, but I enjoy like I've always loved uh, uh, Coleco electronic football. Super simple, you know the rules. It's fun to pick up, play for 10, 15 minutes, you're done. You know, right? I, I, I feel the same way. Like 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 FIFA soccer, that stuff is so hard. Yeah, yeah. And to play, it's just really really technical. So like yeah. the the simpler the game <laughs> is, uh, I think the more and and that's the same one. When we have people over to our, our home arcades, you know, Warlords is easy. It's Pong with four players. You just, right, you have a right. dial. You just, you, you can do it right away. Atari football, uh, fire truck. You're steering a fire well, truck. Yeah, but casual games are that way, right? Yeah. Casual games. Yeah. Like and, and they're super fun, easy to pick up. Monaco GP is a huge hit in my house right. because all right. you do is steer right. that damn thing. All you got to do is avoid the cars. One right. task. Right. Right. Everybody knows how to do it. Super fun, right? Uh, and then you, you're you right. You play Red Dead Redemption or Uncharted. And I don't get me wrong. I love those games. But they're super – there's a there's a learning curve. And you need a book. You got to read a, you need a book. And you need a whole yeah. – Right. Website. Yeah, well, it's really – And, and yeah. my hands are doing things that they weren't designed to do. But if they made a Red Dead Redemption that you could beat in one day, that would be so popular. I mean, be, it's true. And you put all the, all the work into the graphics and make it, you know, do a couple things that are cool, but you don't need to spend 80 hours trying to, you know, get get your guy to the end. Yeah, it's called Red Dead Shooting Gallery. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It just, you know, why? why? And why can't it just be, you know, I want to play the game and blow up the Death Star in, in three hours. It's like a movie. Right, right. right. Um, you know, I just want to do it. I think, okay. so the only, the only game I play is Call of Duty, and that ends basically after everybody dies. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, I'm going to go back to uh, yes. the very beginning of the interview. You talked about uh, Atari had an uh, arcade game room, and you spent a lot of time in there. Uh, and I, I know did. that Atari had not only their own game coin-up games in there, but they had some other games. We've heard uh, some Atari folks say that Defender was their favorite game. Uh, Robotron was mentioned in one interview. Can you tell us what your favorite arcade games were? My favorite was called Kix, Q I X. Yes. yes. Oh yeah. It, it was a, it was just a very uh, um, abstract game. It was very hard to describe. There's a spark that went around this little thing. Yeah. And I just I just I like abstract games. I just I just loved it. I love Missile Command. Yeah. Uh, I love Joust. Oh yeah. yes. I love yeah. the controls in Joust. I love the control where we would flap. You know anything anything that he used to. What was his name? I don't remember what was his name. I think we've had him on the show. Jarvis, Eugene Jarvis. Yeah, yeah. yeah he he was a real yeah. genius. You know, some guys were real, 
really good at making up new games. I never made up new games. I was pretty good at like copying games or, you know, and figuring out what, what makes a game good and copying that thing. Yeah, you have a lot. Hard. You have a lot of people in the chat agreeing with you on your assessment of quicks. Yeah. Oh really? yeah. He was. Uh, what happened to kicks? I mean, just yeah. It just. I, I mean, know it's it's so good. I mean, they did. What was that version of the game where you unveiled a picture underneath? There was that. <laughs> yeah. that was, talk? Uh, Gals Panic. Gals Panic. Pan Gals Panic. Yeah. I got really addicted to Ms. Pac Man. You know, I don't know why. It just it was really Pac Man was great that you can memorize the pattern. Yeah. And just and again play it with a beer. Well, and it, I just loved being able to just play the game. It felt you felt like a like a swami after you after you memorized the pattern and just knew where they were going to go. Yeah, yeah. And it felt so great just to clear the board. How, how did you feel about the like uh, cartoon type games like Dragon's Lair and Space Ace? Oh, I, I hated them. Yeah, yeah, I knew it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, left, right, you know, pick, pick a path. It was just not fun. Well, <laughs> at, at, that, at that point, the game is like playing uh, memory. It's not. Yeah, right. It's just like I'm gonna wait five seconds and then I will yeah. allow you to t to push left. <laughs> well, and, oh, and the, the game, game is. Playing you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the game is completely about memorization. There's so little uh, variation. There's in no the, skill. In the order. Yeah. Well, there's still skill. I mean, I will say there's still skill because there's a timing of memorization, but it's not. It, it's it, they weren't much fun. I remember my first time doing that. I grabbed the joystick and I'm like, why, why doesn't he move where I want him to? Yeah. Like, right, right. like <laughs> it, 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 it's not, the bandwidth doesn't yeah doesn't 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 react the way you want it to. There's a right. there's a great video on the Dragon's Lair. Uh, uh, box set for the Dragon's Lair Space Ace and Space Ace 2 or Dragon's Lair 2 um, and there's a there's a video of a kid being interviewed and he sunk like he's like yeah I think I put like 50 bucks <laughs> you know like to win the game oh right right right, right. and then it's just trial and error right you have yeah. to figure out right so there's no way there's no way you can beat it you just have to know what happens when you go left and right I think Dragon's mm -hmm. Lair has the distinction of having been the first game to charge 50 cents. Right, really? right. Yeah. I found a text file on a BBS. Like I think the BBS was called The Mines of Moria, and it had all of this, all of the moves you needed to beat it. So <laughs> good times. Right. Well, I think uh, Mark. I think we're at our. Are we at our limit here? Yeah. Well, and I got. I have to work later. Yes, so, that's right. Uh, but Mark and. You know, first of all, Rob, thanks for coming on the show. You are awesome. And thank you. And stick with us a little bit after we do our outro thingy, because we'll give you a proper send off. But uh, first of all, I think you and Mark should get together and figure out how you can monetize some classic arcade love on the TikToks. <laughs> Yeah, because I think I think you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no one, nobody does, that everyone who watches TikTok is like twelve years old. Right? No, 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 I, no. I, the, Gen X TikTok and Boomer TikTok exist. Really? Yeah. And yes, they TikTok? they are it's, on there. Yes, it's fabulous. Ooh. It's fabulous. It, it is amazing. Yeah, TikTok <laughs> is for is for us. Rob, Rob will will convert you. You're gonna love it. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, the, Again, stick with us after the outro. And and, uh, and hey, chatters, everybody, thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, this has been uh, the double R's. So that's Arcade Radio. You can check out our website, arcaderadio.com. That's R C A D E radio.com. That's us. For all of our social media and swag links. Call and leave comments just like Bobby Z at 612 548 game. That's 4263. I love it. I love how Brian just looks like Bobby Z. Like everybody, they get it. They say Bobby Z. <laughs> the Who didn't have a call today, but we'll move so, on. <laughs> if you guys are enjoying this thing, uh, pick up some arcade radio swag over at teespring.com slash arcade radio or consider supporting our Patreon campaign over at patreon.com slash arcade radio. Hey, subscribe to our Twitch channel to follow us and click on that notification bell below. And so you will know when we are streaming live. That is twitch.com slash arcade radio. If you like what you're hearing, consider dropping a five-star review on Anchor, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you consume the podcast. Well, that's going to be for tonight's show from the Arcade Radio team. We hope you had a great time, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.